Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. We come to give God our best praise. We come to honor him. We come to worship him on today. We come to glorify his holy and blessed name. For our God is a great God and a great king above all gods. And so we do thank God for another day that he's given to us. Amen. We do love the Lord, and we come to let the world know how much we do love him. And so we gather each week on our prayer call line, amen, via Facebook Live and Periscope. Just thank you, God, for another opportunity and time to gather. We pray that God has been blessing you and been keeping you, been strengthening you and watching over you during this pandemic time. And we encourage you to give God all the glory, the honor, and the praise. For our God is indeed worthy to be praised. Amen? So we encourage you today to salute and to continue to reach out and touch others and encourage people to um, and encourage people with a phone call or prayer or just sharing the word of God with them. For our God is worthy to be praised and to be shared with one another and encourage us along our journey. We want to say a special quick shout out for our birthday girl, Sister Conceda Goods. Her birthday was on yesterday. We want to say happy birthday to her. Amen. And this week, Sister Hester Bailey, Sister Lori Mason, we do thank God for them, uh, their membership and their fellowship with them. And so we just say happy birthday to them this week. We encourage you all to join us on our prayer call on Worshipful Wednesday. Worshipful Wednesday. Amen. We encourage you to join us on Worshipful Wednesday, 6.30 a.m., 12 noon, and then at 6.30 p.m. every Wednesday, we gather and encourage you to be a part of that time of sharing. And also on our prayer call line, we have our Saturday school, 10.30 to noon on Saturdays on our prayer call line. And we encourage you all to be a part of of our prayer call line. Amen. Today I want to send out a special salute, a special salute to the good people of Jesus of Nazareth, Free Will Baptist Church. Amen. We do send out a salute to them as they celebrate their 30th pack, their 30th church anniversary. Amen. Pastor Paulette Bostic is their pastor. And we even salute the founder, the wonderful late Bishop Marilyn Bostic, amen. And as the pastor was saying so eloquently today, don't knock small beginnings. And I just want to say it does not yet appear what God has in store for you all. So continue to hold up the bloodstained banner of Jesus Christ. I understand and know this, Pastor Paulette, and the Jesus of Nazareth family, that your pastor and father and ministry are is to be proud of you all and the work that you're doing, your commitment to the ministry, and we do praise God for you, pray for you much, and encourage you to continue to do the work of ministry that God has called you to. So God bless you today. God bless the Jesus of Nazareth family. Amen? Amen. Today, our text is found in the book of Acts. Amen? The book of Acts chapter 5. And as you're making your way there, let's go to God in prayer. Eternal Lord, our God, our Father, we do thank you for another day that you've allowed us to gather for worship. Lord God, we've been worshiping really all morning, 715 with one church. Lord God, our home church, New Psalmist Baptist Church. Lord God, we continue to pray for their ministry, Lord God. At 9 o'clock, we chime in with our daughter in ministry, Pastor Paulette Bostic, Lord God, and Jesus of Nazareth family, Lord God, let your hand rest upon them. And then, Lord God, we gather each week at noon time, excited about being in the company, in your company with your people. And we just ask that you let your Holy Spirit meet us in this time that we share. Continue to bless your people, Lord God. Let your grace and mercy ever rest upon them, dear Heavenly Father. And in this time of pandemic, Lord God, and all the pressures of life that we face, we pray, Lord God, that you will grant us your grace, 
that we may be able to withstand all that is upon us even at this time. And then, Lord God, give each of us wisdom because we are hearing so many messages in this season, Lord God, particularly from politicians, Lord, Democrats last week, Republicans this week. And we pray, Lord God, that we will be steadfast, leaning and dependent on your holy word, Lord God, that guide us and navigate us through this time. Help us, Lord God, to be students of your word, studying to show ourselves approved, because we understand, O oh God, that your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. So, God, we pray that you will bless us even in this time that we share in preaching of the gospel. Bless your word, Lord God, from Acts chapter 5. Let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, the strength of our Redeemer, we do praise you even now, O oh God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. We've been singing hymns of the church all week long, amen. We have been singing, well, not all week long, well, yes, we have actually, in our worship time, in our private worship time, but each Sunday we've been singing hymns for the last few weeks, amen. I just want to toss this one out. I don't have my hymn book, but actually I do. I haven't turned to the page, amen. But I'm just gonna sing this one from my heart, amen. Because this is one of my all-time favorites, amen. It just reminds me of, of course, my dear beloved mother-in-law, we send this out, even in her memory. We do thank God for her, amen. Sister Teresa Pimento, we do thank God for her. He sweet. I know he sweet I know storm clouds may rise strong winds may blow I I 
Amen. Amen. He's sweet, I know. He's sweet, I know. God bless you. In the book of Acts, chapter 5, beginning at verse number 17 through verse 21, we find these words written in the King James Version. Then the high priest rose up, and all they that were with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees, and were filled with indignation and laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison. But the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said, Go stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. And when they had heard that they had entered the temple early in the morning and taught, but the high priest came, and they that were with him and called the council together, and all the sin of the children of Israel, and sent to the prison to have them brought. We'll pause and stop there. Amen. And in verse number 20, it says, Go, stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. Amen. And I just want to talk today from these words. Let your voice be heard. Let your voice be heard. During these times of pandemic pressures, amen, and political conventions, we have to make sure our voice is heard. We've just finished the Democratic National Convention where history was made, amen, with the nomination of Kamala Harris, as the first African-American slash South Asian woman as the Vice President of the United States, amen. Next week is going to be the Republican National Convention. It will try to uh, convince America to give Donald Trump another four years as president to further divide us and show his absolute disregard and lack of concern for the average person. But I come today, amen, to make sure that amid the COVID-19 pandemic, amid all of the pandemics of life, amen, I don't have them listed, but I'll give you two or three, pandemic of health, amen, pandemic of homelessness, pandemic of joblessness, pandemic of police brutality, pandemics of injustices and inequality, the pandemic of sexism and racism. Y'all know the list, those pandemics, amid all of those pandemics, amen, and all of the political rhetoric that we will hear, we are to let our voice be heard. During these times of pandemic pressure and political uh, conventions, I say again, we must let our voice be heard, amen. We cannot fade into the background of life and allow everything that does not bring glory to God to outpace the message of God, amen. We cannot allow insecure people or political bullies to make us abandon our responsibility to spread the love and gospel of Jesus Christ, amen. We cannot allow fickle-mindedness and manipulative ways of others to sway us on how we serve the Lord or how we speak about the goodness of God in this world, amen. Let me just say it this way. We should not allow anyone that cause us to keep our testimony. And what I'm talking about are those things that we know for certain that God has done for us and who our God is. We should not allow anyone to force us to keep our mouths Closed, amen. We ought to be like the uh, children, to, ought to be like the apostles in Acts chapter 4, verse 20, where they say we can't keep quiet, amen. So I come to push us today again to let your voice be heard, amen. In our text, the apostles were going forth in ministry under the direction and power of the Holy Ghost, amen. They were experiencing great ministry success. They were performing signs and wonder, so much so that in verse 15, the people brought out the sick, amen, laid them in the street, simply so that Peter's shadow 
might fall upon them, amen, and they would be healed. It is of uh, uh, most important that the people of God let their voice be heard. It is of uh, uh, most important that the people of God, amen, go forth, amen, believing that they are operating under the power of the Holy Spirit and let God have his way in this world, amen. Too many times we've just relinquished everything over to the world, amen, not realizing that we have power to be more than conquerors through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And as such, in this text today, the disciples or the apostles, if you would, is performing great miracles and signs and wonders, and they are encouraging us and letting us know today that if you and I would take a firm stand in our faith in Jesus Christ and do all that he has called us to do, amen, we can take change this world, we can compel people to come to Christ for salvation, we can turn this world upside down, amen. The miracles that the apostles were performing were attracting new believers, amen. The miracles confirmed the truth that they were preaching and the presence of God in their lives. Those miracles that they were performing, amen, it demonstrated the power of our risen Christ, that, that the power of our risen Christ was with our with the apostles, and I come to encourage somebody today to let you know that that same power is with each and every one of us. The power of our risen Christ, the one who hung, bled, and died on the old rugged cross for the sins of the world, was buried in a borrowed tomb. But early on the third day morning, he got up with all power, and that exact same power has been given via the Holy Spirit to each and every one of us. And so I come, hallelujah, to encourage somebody today to cry loud and spare not. I come to encourage somebody to open your mouth, amen, to let somebody know that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. I come to encourage somebody today to let them know that you have the power residing in you, amen, because of your relationship with Jesus Christ. You have that power residing in you because of what you know about the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The apostles when they stood to declare amen. With the apostles when they stood to perform miracles. Amen. They didn't go by their own strength. They didn't go by their own might. They did not go by their own power. They simply went amen to do what God has called them to do. Under the power, the unction, hallelujah and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And I come to let somebody know that that same power, that same anointing is upon each and every one of us. So go forth in the power, amen, and let your voice be heard, amen. We go forth, amen, hallelujah. We go forth and let our voices be heard, simply so much so, amen, even in, in the midst of it all, there are going to be some, amen, that are going to show some indignation, amen. Believe it, my brother, my sister, there will be some that will not be pleased with you opening up your mouth and standing against them. Now, let me just stretch a little bit further, amen. Not just simply, amen, for us, amen, to go forth and open our mouths, amen, about the goodness of Jesus Christ, amen, and going forth and telling the world that God loves everybody, amen. But we have to continue to stand, amen, in protest against those things, amen, that bring harm to people, amen. We ought to stand against, yes, the big protest right now is against the post office being shut down, amen, and being decimated, hallelujah, by the joy, amen. He didn't bring no joy, he bringing pain to the people, amen. He ought to throw that name away because it doesn't fit him or suit him, amen. I come to help somebody understand that they need to continue to stand, hallelujah, in protest against racism and sexism and the kinds of things that oppress people and hold people down, amen. We ought to stand against systems, amen, that red line against folk, amen. The cold people back in it, they caused them to pay more, hallelujah, than they should have to pay. But my brother, my sister, I come to encourage somebody today, amen. Terry, we have an echo on my periscope. Can you check that out for me? I come to encourage somebody to let you know today, amen, that each and every one of us are able, amen, to go forth and speak it regardless of who like it or not, amen. You saw my brother, my sister, we come, amen. I come to encourage us to speak against, amen, those policies and procedures that hold people down. And even though some will be indignant, continue to speak it, amen. 
speaking against social policies that propagate poverty and this will make people uncomfortable. Standing against policies that allow only for the destruction of the ecosystem will make folk uncomfortable. Amen. Making a pronouncement against the status quo of the rich and then getting richer during this time of pandemic when so many people are without jobs will make some people uncomfortable. In our text today, the elders of the temple and the Sadducees were threatened by the disciples who determined to live by the words of Christ as opposed to the way, their ways in them. And in some, in, in the same life fashion, when you and I let our voices be heard or stand as the banner of Christ offering a critical critique to the world's disorder, amen, some people will get indignant. My brother, my sister, I come to encourage somebody today to let you know that even though folk may get indignant, continue to open up your mouth for the Lord and don't turn back. Their indignation may be against us, but we must be determined to always speak what God said to the Lord, regardless of who likes it. Amen. Some people will not like what you are saying, but continue to open up your mouth unto the Lord and do not turn back. Hallelujah. Everyone will not want to hear the truth. Amen. Everyone will not want somebody to be delivered by the words that you proclaim, but open up your mouth in the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. People will be unnerved, amen, by your willingness to follow Christ, amen, and not the crowd. Some people will be upset and disappointed and frustrated at you, amen. But I come to encourage you. If you speak your words, that will deliver, folks. If you speak your words, that will heal, folks. If you speak your words, that will set the captives free. If you speak your words, amen, that will do somebody good. Continue to open up your mouth regardless of the folk that are becoming indignant about it. Amen. No matter how much good we may be doing, there will always be those, amen, that will still try to rise up and show their objection and hatred towards you. But my brother, my sister, faith in God does not make trouble, amen. Faith in God does not make troublemakers to disappear. But however, my brothers and sisters, faith in God, amen, gives us the right perspective to handle the objection and hatred of others. Amen. When we have the right perspective of who we're serving, it does not matter how indignant they may become. When we have the right perspective of knowing that our God will be with us, and I'm going to get to that in a few minutes, amen, that, that, that our God will be with us, amen, we can always stand, amen, no matter how troubling the times, amen. That's why Martin Luther King said, I, I've been to the mountaintop and, I, and I've seen the promised land, amen. And I might not get there with you. He wasn't wary about anything. And I come to let somebody know today, you should not be wary about those that are indignant, amen. Because they may destroy the body, amen, but they can't destroy the soul, amen. They may destroy the body, but understand this, beloved. They cannot understand this, beloved. They cannot stop the movement of God, hallelujah. I come to encourage somebody today to help you understand, amen, that when you and I stand for God, that nothing in this world can stand against us, amen. That's why we say, if God be for us, who can be against us? How if God be for us, he's more than all the world that may stand against us. My brother, my sister, we got to understand always, regardless of who's indignant, if God will stand against us, that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. So regardless of how indignant folk may be, amen. We have to understand that God will give us the ability to continue to proclaim the word, amen, to set the captives free, to heal folk and to deliver them. But secondly, we gotta understand, amen, that we gotta continue to let our voices be heard, even though some may get indignant, they will also try to squelch our voice. In verse number 18, it says, and they laid hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison, amen. And I want somebody to understand that even if they come and lay their hands on you, Put you in a common prison, amen. Like you're nothing, nobody important to understand. They cannot squelch your voice, hallelujah. That'll just give you the opportunity to open up and start a prison ministry. Y'all ain't talking back to me today. 
I need somebody to understand people who are up to no good do not like the truth. Come help us understand people who are up to no good do not like, hallelujah, dissenting voices. People who are up to no good do not like the corrective truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. People who are up to no good do not like those, amen, who refute and rebuke the lies that are told, amen. My brother and my sister, I come to help us understand that people who are up to no good will try to silence you and make you stop declaring the liberating message of Jesus Christ. People who are up to no good will try to stop you so that the people that they are pressing keep in bondage in them. The people that they keep their foot on their neck, amen, and knee on their neck, amen. The people that, 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 that they keep down, amen. They will try, hallelujah, to stop you so that you will not speak the words that will cause those people to rise up. I come to encourage us today, amen, to continue to let our voices be heard, hallelujah, so that people can rise up, amen. Rise up to stand against tyranny. Rise up to stand against oppression. Rise up to stand against hatred. Rise up to stand against amen, policies, amen, and procedures, amen, that hold people down, amen. Rise up, hallelujah, to set black folk free. Rise up to set white folk free. Rise up to set Asian folk free. Rise up to set Latino folk free, amen. That's what we do, hallelujah, with our voices. The message of Jesus Christ is an emancipation message, amen. And those who seek to silence your voice do not want others set free, amen. You have to remember Juneteenth, amen. June 19th, amen. The people of Texas did not want the slaves, amen. Hallelujah, to hear Abraham Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation because they benefited from the bondage of those African people. In the same way, my brothers and sisters, those who tried to squelch or silence our voice, to silence our message, the message of God's redeeming love, amen, benefit from having people in bondage to oppressive social systems where poverty is profited from, where minimum wage for the most equates to ridiculously exorbitant, excessive profits for others, and where inequitable sentencing has one group of people getting longer jail terms for lesser crimes than others who have money or more privilege. And this, and this, and this is the case in point. An African American lady named Kelly William Bowler was sentenced to three years in prison for sending her daughter to a better school district using the wrong address. While Lori Laughlin was sentenced to two months for bribing her daughter's way into college. Enough is enough. And my brother and my sister, I come to help somebody understand that we have to continue to let our voices be heard in them no matter what, because even though they may try to squelch our voice, those kinds of inequalities and inequities, amen, those kinds of oppressions, amen, need to be spoken against, amen, because the people need to be relieved, the people need to be healed, the people need to be set free, amen. And I come to encourage us today to continue to let your voice be heard, amen. These may be times of pandemic, amen, that will cause us to sit back, amen, and try to duck for cover underneath, hallelujah, to duck for cover away from the pandemic so that we don't get caught up in it. But my brother, my sister, I come today to encourage you to continue to let your voice be heard, amen. We have to continue to open up our mouths, amen, even though some may be indignant. We have to continue to open up our mouths even though some will try to squelch our voice, amen. And somebody might be sitting there right now, amen. Brother Jimmy said, Pastor, that might be a little bit dangerous task. They already thrown the apostles in jail, amen. But that might be so. But look at verse number 19. This is where we get our holler, amen. This is where we get our shouting, amen. This is where we get our praise on, amen. Hallelujah. In verse number 19 of Acts chapter 5 says, But the angel of the Lord, the angel of the Lord, amen, by night, amen, opened the prison doors, set them free, amen. And I just want to let somebody know, amen, you can shout because you're at your own house, you can tear up all the furniture all you want to, you can break every dish if you want to, but that's all right. But the angel of the Lord, amen, set them free. And this is where I like to shout, amen, this is where I give my praise, amen. God has his angels watching over you. All the time. In other words, God always has angels watching over you. Amen. 
God's angels watch us over us, amen, to keep us in all our ways. God's angels watch over us, to keep a head of protection around us. God's angels watch over us, to keep us in the midst of the trials and tribulations. God's angels watch over us. When things get difficult, when times get trying, God's angels watch over us. When mean people try to destroy the message of God, and then God's angels watch over us, amen. When we stand up to do the right thing for the Lord, God's angels watch over us, amen. God's angels watch over us when those, hallelujah, that mean us no good, amen, try to set trap for us. God's angels watch over us. When someone has set a ditch for us, and then for us to fall, and God's angels watch over us. When the trouble try to rise up and pull us down, amen, God's angels watch over us to keep us strong. God's angels watch over us to keep us going forward. God's angels watch over us to keep us from getting anxious. God's angels watch over us to keep us faithful. God's angels watch over us, amen, to keep our heads lifted up. God's angels watch over us so that we can lift up our eyes to the hills when it's coming down. Hell. God's angels watch over us. And I come to let somebody know today we have nothing to fear when we lift our voices up. God's angels are watching over us. We have nothing to fear when we open up our mouths for the Lord because God's angels watching over us. We have nothing, hallelujah, to be afraid of because God's angels are watching over us, amen, to keep us in all our ways. How do you know that, preacher? That's as our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, amen, hallelujah. When he came down through 42 generations, God's angels was watching over him, amen. When he walked among humanity, God's angels, angels was watching over him, amen, and when he was in the garden, hallelujah, of Gethsemane, praying on the night before he was crucified, God's angels was watching over him, ministering to him, so that when he was being betrayed by Judas, he would continue on the journey, when he was being denied by Peter, he would continue on the journey, amen, and when he hung on that old ruddy cross, amen, the angels of God was watching over him, hallelujah, when, hallelujah, when the people around was cheering him, amen, saying that he saved others, hallelujah, let him come down and save himself, amen, when the thief on the side, God's angels was watching over him, amen, when the thief on the side said, save yourself and save us, hallelujah, God's angels were watching over him, how do you know that preacher, because he said, Father, forgive him, he wasn't worried about what was going on, he wasn't worried about his situation, he knew that he had the victory, amen, said, Father, forgive him, I come to help somebody understand that God's angels is watching over each and every one of us. And in the name of Jesus, we had the victory. And when he buried him in that spiral tomb, amen, hallelujah, God's angels was watching over him. He slept good on Friday night. He slept good all day Saturday, but early, hallelujah, on Sunday morning, God's angels gave him on the stone way because the angels were watching over him and let him free, amen, and he got us from that grave with all power in his hands because God's angels were watching over him. And I come to let somebody know that when you stand up, to let your voice be heard, no matter how much they may try to bring you down, no matter how much they may have a grip on you, God's angel is watching over you to set you free, to empower you, to equip you, to save you, to deliver you, to help you. So open up your mouth unto the Lord. Let somebody hear your testimony because it is your testimony that will set others free. It is your testimony that will help somebody else. It is your testimony that will encourage someone else. It is your testimony that will let somebody else know how much that God loves them. It is your testimony, my brother, my sister. That will let somebody else know. And so I come to encourage you today to continue to open up your mouth. Amen. Because it is by your testimony. Amen. It is by your testimony that others will be set free. Somebody ought to say hallelujah right there. God bless you today. Let your voice be heard. Let your voice be heard. Because it is by your testimony that others will be set free. The word of God says it this way, and they overcame them by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. In Revelation 12, 11, we learn and understand and know that when you open up your mouth, it can make a difference. And that's what we're talking about today. 
making a difference. So open up your mouth to make a difference. God bless you. Have a smile upon you. My brother, my sister, you may be watching us today. I want to encourage you to be a part of a church. Amen. But first, we, we come unequivocally, amen, and unapologetically asking, have you given your life to Jesus Christ? It's a simple process because the primary mission of the church is to continue to proclaim Jesus so that folk will know that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And, and the book of Acts lets us know that whosoever shall call on him shall be saved. And I want you to know today that you can be saved by just simply asking Jesus to come into your heart and save your soul. The Bible says in Romans that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in the heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And so my brother, my sister, if you're not a part of a church and you've never asked God to come into your heart, we encourage you right now to let your voice be heard. Let God hear your voice to ask him to come into your heart and to save your soul. He will do that for you because he loves you. He cares for you. And he wants to do that for you. So God bless you today. Praise God for each of you that have joined today. Continue to let your voice be heard. Do not be ashamed to talk about the goodness of the Lord in your life. Let both know. Regardless of who gets indignant, regardless of even the things they go through to try to squelch your voice, let your voice be heard. God bless you today. Have a smile upon you. Praise God for you. Today we have Reverend Jacqueline Clark, amen, praying for us. We thank God for her ministry and her witness. God bless you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you are the one who spoke first. God, you spoke everything into existence. Hallelujah. God, you wasn't afraid to create what you saw fit that will bring you glory and edify your people. So God, we bow in humble submission to all that you do. God, and even in that time, you created us in your likeness and your image, God. So we come before you asking that you would just continue to bestow upon us all of your attributes, that we might speak and speak to authority with boldness, God. God, give us the courage. Give us the strength. Give us all that we stand in the need of to do what you have assigned our hands to do in this present age. God, we are in a new dispensation, a new discourse. And God, we need to do things differently. But God, we only can do it if you do it with us. God, we come just standing in awe of all that has already transpired and all the things that are coming to pass. But God, you've already told us in your words, so we stand on your promise that you are working everything out for our good. So God, we submit to your will today and we submit to your way. We know that what is done in heaven shall be done on earth. God, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who thought it not robbery and who was bold enough and courageous enough to come down through 42 generations to atone our sins for us so that we might have a right to everlasting life. God, so as we, your people, come calling on your holy and righteous name, God, we ask that you would help us to continue to exhort you and to exalt you and to lift your holy name up, drawing women, men, boys, and girls to you, God. God, we need you, and we need you right now, God, and we need to be the people that you have called us to be. So, God, help us to walk upright. Help us to live a holy and righteous life before you, God. There's so many things that are going on all around us, God, and we can't do it all by ourselves, but God, with you and collectively, all things are possible. So, God, we ask that you would just bestow an extra dispensation of love and grace and mercy on us that as we go out and reach your people God they won't see us 
but they will see you in us, God, and they will bow down to the the divine that's within us, God. They will hear your voice, and God, they will heed your word, God. God, and even as we go out and we love on people, God, let our hands do the work that you have assigned us to do. God, help us to be a blessing everywhere that we go. And those, God, that are sick, God, I ask right now that you would just go with them. God, be with them and stand by their side, God. Speak peace into them, God. Oh, God, I even ask that a healing might take place, God, that they might be made whole, whether they're sick in mind, body, or even in their emotions, God. I ask right now that you would do it in the mighty name of Jesus. And God, as we walk on this side of Jordan, God, trying to navigate what's going on in the United States of America and all over this world, God, Oh, God, give us the visions and dreams, God, that we need to have, oh, God, to do what you called us to do. So, God, we thank you. We praise you, God. We glorify you. We magnify you, God. God, continue to bless us, and we know that we shall be blessed. Continue to keep us, God, and we know that we shall be kept. God, continue to just love on us, God, because we need your love. Only your love will continue to strengthen us to do what you called us to do. So we thank you, God. We praise you. We magnify you. We glorify you. And we count it all done. In your son Jesus' name we do pray. And our soul says, amen. 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 Now may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance round about you and give you peace. God bless you.